How much mortgage can I afford? This is a very important question that you should be asking yourself before even looking for a home. Remember, you want to shop for your mortgage before you shop for your home. And how much mortgage you can afford is not an easy question to answer. If you type in how much mortgage can I afford into Google, you'll be bombarded with information, most of which is incomplete, partial truths, and just overall can be misleading. But if you listen to the professionals who are in mortgage lending, you'll discover that there are generally three different schools of thought that they rely on. So today I'm going to break these schools of thought down for you and give you the pros and cons of each. That way you can decide what is right for you. And please be sure to stick around to the end because I'm going to give you my recommendations as an 18-year mortgage lender on how much mortgage you can afford when buying a home. A quick note, today we're talking about how to calculate how much mortgage you can afford. This is not the same of how much mortgage you can qualify for. You will most likely be able to qualify for more than what is recommended by each of the three methods that we look at today. Just because you can qualify for it doesn't mean you can actually afford it. The point of this video is to help you figure out how much house you can buy without being house poor. Buying a home, especially for your first one, can definitely come with some sacrifices, but it should not put you at financial risk. If your house payment would prevent you from building an emergency fund, saving for retirement, or pursuing goals and hobbies, then you should probably keep looking for a more affordable home or continue saving for a larger down payment. So stop thinking about how much house you can qualify for and start thinking about how much house you can afford. All right, let's jump into the first method, which is the most common one. It's called the 2836 rule. The 2836 rule states that you should spend no more than 28% of your gross income on housing expenses. That means 28% of your income before taxes. Housing expenses include principal and interest on your loan, as well as insurance, property taxes, PMI, home association dues, flood insurance, and other fees that may apply. The 2836 rule says that when you add up your mortgage plus the minimum payment on all your debts, it shouldn't be more than 36% of your gross income. That includes your car payment, credit cards, student loans, and other debts you might have. So let's look at an example. Let's say we have a fictional couple. We'll call them Bill and Shauna Brown. We know that Bill and Shauna have a combined annual income of 78,000, giving them a gross monthly income of 6,500. Their debts include a credit card with a minimum monthly payment of $100, $150 car payment, and combined student loans at $250 a month. If we look at the 2836 rule, the Browns are going to want to keep their mortgage payment to $1820 per month to stay under the 28% mark. If we add to the total other debt of $500 a month, we get $2320, which is 35.7% of their monthly gross income, just below our goal of 36 at that 35.7. So how much house could the Browns get with this kind of budget? That's impossible to know without more information. There are so many different factors that go into calculating a mortgage rate and that monthly payment that goes along with that. But for the sake of giving you an example and comparing these methods, we're going to use the following information to calculate the mortgage amount. We will also use a mortgage calculator to do the math, and I will put a link to the description below so that you can use that same calculator. We're going to use $109 a month for home insurance, a 20% down payment, meaning there's no monthly PMI. There's not going to be any HOA dues and a 3.5% interest rate on a 30-year loan. And for property taxes, we're going to say that we're staying in Minnesota because they're in line with the national average. So with that information, a desired monthly payment of $1,820, the Browns could afford a home up to $383,000. Now, again, I'm going to have a disclaimer. Are these the numbers that you would qualify for with that same monthly budget? Probably not. But for the sake of what we're talking about today, it's helpful to see how much house you could afford using the, this method and how it might vary according to different approaches. Real quick, if you want to buy a home but you're not sure where to begin and you feel anxious just thinking about the mortgage process, I've created a quick and easy course to walk you through it step by step. It's called Home Buyer 101 and it covers everything you need to know from finding the right lender to preparing for your loan package to closing on that new home. Don't leave the biggest purchase of your life to chance. Get educated so you can confidently buy the house you love and get a mortgage you love just as much. If you want to learn more, I'll include the link in the description below. So what are the pros of the 2836 rule? It allows you to buy more house than the other methods. 
It also allows you to make adjustments based on your debt levels. For example, if you know you have really high student loans, you could lower your mortgage payment target below the 28% to make sure your total DTI is still at or below the 36% of your monthly gross income. What are the cons of the 2836 rule? These 2836 targets can be hard for some homeowners to it, hit, especially first time home buyers and those who live in areas that have a higher cost of living. According to CoreLogic, about 25% of borrowers in 2019 had a total debt to income ratio higher than 43%. This means more than 25% of borrowers in 2019 were over that 36% target. Another con is this method looks at your gross income not how much you actually bring home. Depending upon where you live and your tax rate, this can be misleading. It can make it look like you can afford more than your budget actually allows. Now, before we move to the next method, please take a second and give this video a like. When you hit like, it helps to support the growth of my channel by telling YouTube to recommend it to others. So thank you so much for doing that. Okay, let's look at the next method for deciding how much mortgage you can afford. I've heard this referred to as the 30% solution. This is the idea that your mortgage payment shouldn't exceed more than 30% of your gross monthly income. So if we go back to look at our example with Bill and Shauna, their gross monthly income of 6,500 means they wanna aim for a monthly mortgage payment of 1,950 instead of the one that was around 1,800. With all the same factors above, this would mean that the Browns could get a home for $412,000 with a 30 year fixed rate. One pro of this method is that it's really easy to calculate. It's also in line with most people's budget for their monthly mortgage payment. One of the cons is that it doesn't take into account how much other debt you might be carrying. It also looks at your gross monthly income, not the net. Fans of the third method will say this could have you overextending on your housing budget, making it difficult to meet your other financial goals. Stay tuned because we're going to talk about and look at that method in just a minute. Before we do, there's another school of thought that expands the 30% solution called 3033. This idea starts with the same premise that your mortgage payment shouldn't exceed more than 30% of your gross monthly income. But it goes a couple steps further, instructing you to save 30% of the home's value in cash. Of that 30%, 20% is used for the down payment to avoid PMI and get a better rate on your mortgage, and the 10% is a cash buffer in case of emergency or unexpected repair. It also says that the total home price should not exceed three times your annual income. This means if we look at Bill and Shauna again with their annual household income of 78,000, they shouldn't be looking at homes over 234,000. So that's a big difference from the other two examples we gave. So let's say they found a home for 230. They need to save 30% of that or 69,000 to use as down payment and emergency fund. Now, if you plug that home price in and the down payment to a mortgage calculator, using the same factors as before, their monthly payment would be 1137, well below the 30% goal. Because of this, the Browns could change the lo their loan to a 15 year mortgage and making their monthly payment 1626, still below the 30% rule, and they're gonna pay off the house in half the time. So what are the pros and cons of the 3033? A pro is that you'll be in great on a great financial path with home ownership. You will comfortably own a home and still meet your other financial goals, and you've got a safety net in the bank. A con is that it just isn't realistic for everyone. It's not that easy saving up that much cash to become a homeowner. And if you live where home prices have gone way up, you might not even be able to find a home that you can afford that's three times your income. That brings us to the third rule, which is a 25% rule. This is used by a lot of financial advisors and was made popular by Dave Ramsey. The 25% rule says housing, including maintenance, ideally shouldn't consume more than 25% of the household budget. Right off the bat, this is different from the other two methods we've looked at because instead of basing your mortgage payment off your gross income, this looks at your actual take home pay. So if we look at our couple, Bill and Shauna, we estimate their net income to be $51.35 a month of that $6,500. That means their mortgage payment needs to be under 1284, which gives them significantly less to spend each month than the other options that we looked at. If we look at all of our same numbers and plug this new monthly payment goal into our mortgage calculator, it looks like Bill and Sean are in the market to purchase a home that's about $263,000 with 
a 30-year loan. Again, what are the pros and cons of the 25% rule? The pro is that your budget is based on the actual take-home pay, so you won't likely overpay for housing. It's also a conservative approach, so you'll most likely be able to meet your other financial goals and not take on unneeded risk with home ownership. The cons are that it might be harder to find a house in your price range, and you might need to save up more than 20% as a down payment so you can go up in price and still meet that monthly payment target. Finally, after almost 18 years as a mortgage lender, what would I recommend? Any of the three pro approaches are going to be a great start, but what works for you will depend on your situation and most importantly, your goals. The first thing anyone looking to buy a house needs to do is map out their budget, find out your net income levels, calculate what you actually take home each month, then list out all of your expenses, not just your debts, to find out what you can afford with your budget. For example, if you have two young children and have to pay daycare costs, that might mean a 30% of your net income would way overextend your monthly budget. Also, can your monthly mortgage payment pass the puke test? I know that sounds crazy, but if you feel nauseous when you think about making that payment, then that is too much for you. I know this is a lot, so to help you out, I'm putting links in the description below for a couple checklists from my Home Buyer 101 course. Those who have taken the course report that the monthly mortgage payment calculator and what's in a rate checklist are really helpful when trying to determine how much mortgage you can afford. Once you're able to get into a home you can afford, it's time to make a plan on how to pay it off. In my video, Pay Off Your Mortgage Early, or Should You, I explain some of the best strategies for paying off your mortgage early, and I give you my number one secret strategy. I will continue to release videos with mortgage advice each week, so be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to watch the next one. Click the link to watch this video, and I will see you there.